I feel like I've been waiting forever to try a hoo-hoo markers, but it was really, really difficult for me to get them because I do not live in the United States or the United Kingdom, and that's basically the easiest place to get them. But they're finally here, I can finally try them out, and I am so, so excited. Kia ora everyone, this is Hey Johanna. I've been bursting to try out Ahuhu markers for months now and the day has finally arrived. Ahuhu markers are a very popular brand of affordable markers or marker alternatives. We all know and love the king of markers, the Copic Sketch, but as these babies retail from anywhere between seven and 10 US dollars per marker, people are constantly on the lookout for a cheaper alternative and Ahuhu seems to fit the mark for a lot of people. Now I realize this is hardly a unique video, you barely have to type Ohuhu into the YouTube search bar and you'll probably get hundreds of results, but I'm just a little bit skeptical. If something seems too good to be true, in my experience it usually is. So I've tried a couple of marker alternatives in the past with some really devastating results. <laughs> I'll leave a link to my Spectra Noir review up here. So I just have to see for myself how these markers measure up against my tried and tested favorites, my Copics and my Winsor & Newtons. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. So Ahuhu markers come in packs like this. You can't buy them as singles. I bought the 48 brush marker pack. You can get Ohuhu with the bullet nibs, but I really wanted to try the brush ones. Now on the Ohuhu website, it says that this pack sells for 35 US dollars. I got mine for a lot more than that because it's tricky to get them in my location. But if we say that this pack costs 35 US dollars, that ends up coming out to 70 cents per marker, which is so, so cheap. The markers come in this handy little bag, which at first I thought was stupid, but I actually really love it now. You can zip it up, it's got a little handle so you can transport it with you, and because the markers are always standing up vertically, you can always see which colour you're going to grab before you go for it. So let's move on to what the markers actually look like. So each marker is double sided, they have a round white barrel with the brand name printed in silver and an icon on each side indicating which side is the broad nib and which side is the brush nib. Both caps have the number code and colour name on it, but it's not on the barrel, so you don't want to be pulling off both caps and then forgetting which pen is which. The caps fit on the opposite end of the pen, which is quite nice, so you can leave it there while you're drawing, and it snaps nice and tight into place when the pen is not in use as well. The caps have these notches on each side so as to prevent the pen from rolling away or rolling off your desk as well. So the brush nib on the Ohuhu markers is both firmer and longer than a Copic or a Winsor & Newton brush, but it's still flexible enough to get that feathering texture. It holds its shape well and it bounces back pretty easily. It's slightly more triangular shaped than either the Copic or the Winsor & Newton, but I really don't care that much about that because I couldn't even tell if that was making a difference or not. Because it's slightly less spongy than the Winsor & Newton or the Copics, I suspect that over time the nib might wear down and become slightly frayed, but that's not an issue I've encountered yet, and to be fair, I have put most of the pens through a pretty rigorous stress test at this point. The broad nib is quite broad, but otherwise pretty similar to the Copic and the Winsor & Newton. I mean, I really couldn't tell much of a difference between them. Both the broad nib and the brush nibs are juicy as it's probably too juicy to be honest, it's definitely more so than either my Copics or my Winsor & Newtons and occasionally I'd get some ink splatter on my hands or on the page. Also sometimes the paper couldn't handle the amount of moisture that was being put down so that's definitely something to consider. It's quite a thick pen to hold, and by thick I mean girthy. It's maybe not as thick as say my Spectrum Noirs, but it's still slightly on the larger end of what's comfortable for me to hold, although it's not too much bigger than my Winsor & Newtons, and I'll be honest, I didn't really notice that much until after I'd been using them for hours and hours and hours, and really with any pen, your hands will get sore after a while. So other than all that, there's not too much more to talk about appearance-wise, so next thing we're gonna do is swatch these out completely and examine the ink quality. I sorted out the colours as best I could before swatching and put them in hue order and what I learned from this process is that you really can't trust the colour on the caps. So some of them are really very close and accurate but others are just way way off. So it really is necessary to have a swatch sheet nearby. The Ohuhu packs do come with a printed swatch sheet but it's always a good idea to make one yourself just to get a feel for the markers and also check that you're not missing one or one's gone dry, that sort of thing. After I had fully swatched out the Ohuhu colours, I went through and colour matched with markers I already owned from both Winsor & Newton and Copic. A few of the Ohuhu markers were unique and I wasn't able to properly match with any of the colours I owned, but there were many colours I was able to match pretty close. I did this so that later on I can go through and test out the ink quality and directly compare it side by side, but I'll talk a bit more about that later. I noticed that the collection in this 48 pack contained quite a good range of colours. There were heaps of greens and quite a few blues, but in general it was a decent range of hues and shades. 
The most notable thing about this range is that there's not a whole load of tonal variety. I was quite impressed with some of the dark colours which were really deep and rich but most of the colours were mid-tone. So you can see somewhat what I mean here. I went through after the swatching process and put all the markers into tonal order. I will make a video at some point explaining what all these colour theory terms mean like tone, saturation, hue, that sort of thing. But for now you can just see that if I turn down the saturation and make this grayscale, it's much easier to see that there are some dark tones or greys in this pack going through to some lighter tones or greys. Even though there are some dark tones and some light ones, the vast majority of the range is in this kind of middle section here. There are lots of markers in this pack called pastel pink, pastel blue, pastel green, and I expected them to be very light tones, but on paper they came out quite mid-tone and not really what you'd expect pastel to be. That was the one and only disappointment from these pens during the swatching process. Other than that, they went down smoothly, the colours are vibrant, and you could get by very, very happily with this pack without having to purchase any additional markers. So the ink quality of these markers seems to be really good as far as I can tell. Generally what I look for at this stage is something that I call pilling. So some alcohol based inks when dried can leave a slightly uneven, almost dotty looking texture and what's happening is you can see the small fibres of the paper, meaning the ink hasn't absorbed as well into the lighter spaces. Different markers react differently to different marker cards so this can sometimes be remedied by finding a different marker paper but I find that this can happen even with Copics on Copic branded marker paper. The paper I use is generally pretty decent for both my Copics and my Winsor & Newtons, so that's what I've tested my Ohuhu on today, but I have also done a couple of swatches on the Winsor & Newton marker paper over here as well. So some of the Ohuhu markers do do this pilling a little bit, but it's just a tiny amount. You may not even be able to see it on camera, and you certainly won't be able to see it from this far away. It's most noticeable in the browns, but to be honest I'm not too concerned because even Copic can do this a little bit. Again, I'm not really sure if you'll be able to see this on camera because it's so minute a detail, but I'm just not too worried about it because generally the colours are really smooth and really flat. So Winsor & Newton I've found has been the best for not doing this pilling, and as you can see, some of the Ohuhu colours right next to the Winsor & Newtons are really, really smooth and flat as well, and there's not much pilling going on. So I'm really not concerned about the small amount of pilling that's happening on some of the markers. Generally, I'm really, really impressed with the ink quality considering these markers are just so cheap. It was really important for me to colour match every single colour so I could look at any discrepancies in the ink and have a look side by side with my favourite markers just to see if I'd missed anything and definitely this was a good idea because as I've already said, you can see this pilling a lot more in the browns but not at all in some of the reds. So if I had just tested my red Ohuhu markers with my Winsor & Newton red markers, I may have seen that the ink quality was really flat and smooth and said, okay, well, all of the markers have this really flat, smooth ink, and that just wouldn't be true for some of the browns. But generally, the ink quality is amazing. I'm really, really impressed. I did this little kind of doodle sketch thing, and as you can see, the colors are really bright, they're vibrant. This is the same card as I've done the swatches on, and you can see that they blend quite nicely, and just generally, I'm really, really happy with the result that I've got so far. So theoretically, you should be able to use different brands of markers together, provided that they are all alcohol-based, but I haven't found this to always be the case. For instance, my Winsor & Newtons and my Copics don't react amazingly to each other, so I do avoid blending and layering them together if I can help it. So this next sheet is just to test out how the Ohuhu markers layer and blend with both my Copics and my Winsor & Newtons, as well as whether they bleed when colouring over the different multi-liners that I use. I actually did this process twice, once with a dark tone and once with a light tone, just to see if there were any differences between the dark inks and the light inks, but I pretty much got the same result for both. They didn't bleed any of the liners that I use, even after scrubbing the pen across the paper multiple times. They layered up pretty decently with themselves and the Copics, and while they did layer up with the Winsor & Newtons, I'd probably avoid doing it in a finished artwork, as there was a slight tendency to push the ink away rather than layer over the top. They blended really well with themselves, which is to be expected, but they also blended really well with the Copics. Again, they didn't blend as amazingly with the Winsor & Newtons. I was actually surprised at how similar the ink seemed to be between the Copic and the Ohuhu, so I can definitely use those two brands together in the future if I need to or want to. Again, they didn't blend amazingly with the Winsor & Newtons, but if I scrubbed enough, they sort of did eventually blend together. So the only thing left to do now is do a complete illustration with the Ohuhu markers.
so here is the final illustration and I think it's turned out really, really good. It's quite vibrant. It basically looks like I did it with my Winsor & Newton, so I'm thrilled with the result. Guys, I really wanted to hate these markers. <laughs> Truly, I did. I'm a big advocate for avoiding cheap and nasty art supplies because more often than not, a cheap, low quality material will hold you back more than is worth the saved cost. But these are hoo-hoo markers were just very enjoyable to work with. There's really nothing negative I can say about them. I mean, they're absolutely perfect for a beginner with alcohol markers. They're cheap, the ink quality is good, the build quality is good. They're just a great introduction to the medium and even someone with a lot of experience in markers could happily use these. You get a pretty decent range and for 70 cents a marker, that's just a bargain. It's it's unheard of really. I would still recommend purchasing some additional markers from Copic or Winsor & Newton to add to the collection, especially some really dark or really light tones because Uhuhu doesn't seem to be able to do those, but other than that, you'll be absolutely fine with a set of these. Will these replace my Winsor & Newtons and my Copics? No, probably not. Will I ever use them again? Yeah, I think I will. I found them enjoyable to use and I just think that they'll become a part of my everyday marker collection. I think that these are great beginner to intermediate markers and if you have any interest in alcohol markers at all, you should consider buying a set. At $35, it's just so worth it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Kia ora everyone, have a wonderful evening and I'll see you next time. Bye. If you've made it this far in the video, then you'll probably be interested to know that I did this drawing and colored it in again with my Winsor & Newtons and my Copics that I color matched to the Ohuhu swatches earlier on in the video. And as soon as I picked up my Winsor & Newtons, I was like, mmm, I am home. So as much as I love the Ohuhus, the Winsor & Newtons and my Copics are still going to be my first choice.